Chloe, you um, so you are now a developer mm -hmm. and an evangelist, right, yeah. at Codefresh. Okay. So, but you you didn't start that way. So, so what did you do before? Yeah. So before I was a developer evangelist, uh, I actually got my undergrad in theater performance. Um, both of my parents were artists. I had a playwright director for a father and a costume designer for a mother. So the arts seemed like a pretty, you know, reasonable thing to go into. Um, and actually what ended up happening was after I graduated with a degree in theater, um, I worked a lot of day jobs in tech. So I was an office manager. I was an executive assistant. Um, so I was working at startups, but I really wanted to learn how to code. Um, and I actually saw a talk at Google where they were talking about getting more young women involved in tech by adding more characters to Nickelodeon and Disney Channel shows. And I was sitting there in the talk, I was probably 25, thinking, well, where was this when I was a kid? I would have loved to have done this. Uh, and my partner is a um, Android developer. So when I mentioned to him, you know, it's too late for me, he went, actually, you can still learn. So I ended up studying on my own, and I went to Hackbright Academy, which is an all-female software engineering boot camp. And uh, many months later, I am here. <laughs> well, congratulations, because that's uh, and so did you did you have like a formal uh, training then, or or you just like studied? But uh, so tell us more a little bit of, about that study. Yeah. So I. Um, I was performing as an actor for many years, kind of got to a point with it where I got a little bored. Um, and I started studying on my own. I started with Swift. I kind of started the difficult way. Um, and then I, lear I learned from a bunch of resources like Team Treehouse, I uh, use Code Academy, and I'm very much a structured person, so it was very hard to be disciplined because I was working nine to five Monday through Friday and spending all of my evenings and weekends learning how to code. So when I heard about these boot camps that were popping up all over the Bay Area, um, I started looking into Hack Reactor and App Academy and Hackbrite. Their mission statement of changing the ratio of women in tech just really resonated with me. Um, so Hackbrite is a 12-week software engineering boot camp um, in the city full-time. Um, so I quit my job <laughs> and uh, got into Hackbrite, was accepted to Hackbrite, and my, completely changed my life. <laughs> wow. So any, uh, any recommendation for people who have, um, who may be like wondering, like, can, can, can I learn code? And can, I mean, how should I start? How should I go about it? Yeah, so I think learning to code, anyone can do it. Um, I definitely think you have to have a passion for it, for sure. Um, the best advice that I can give personally is, I think a lot of people are intimidated, especially if they get started later in life, like myself, um, that you know, many, many kids now are learning to code in elementary school, and it can be very intimidating to go to some of these high school hackathons where everyone knows a lot more than you. But a benefit actually to coming into tech a little later is having that experience. Um, and I think diverse candidates are really interesting because I come to the software engineering world with a theater background. And as you know, engineers don't really like talking in front of people very much. Um, so I'm a very rare person who knows how to code, but also really loves speaking with people and speaking in front of people. Public speaking is something that it's, it's hard to find developers who like to do that. Um, similarly, in my Hackbreak cohort, there were some women who had worked in education or they knew a lot about mapping or, you know, all of these very interesting backgrounds that you can actually apply that to computer science. I actually think it gives you a leg up in a really cool way. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Like diversity is very important. I mean, and diversity also for building software, right? Because I mean, not, I mean, end users are not necessarily developers, right? So at yeah. the end of the day, it makes a bit difference. Want to comment on that? Sure. Yeah, I think that a lot of times when we talk about diversity, um, we always assume race and gender. But I think that diversity can also come in the form of background. Um, I know just coming, I'm a very strong advocate for boot camps. I know there's a lot of like, we interviewed a boot camp grad once and it didn't go well. Um, but you know, not all boot camps are created equally. And I think that if you really want to hire diverse candidates, because I always see these talks where they're like, where are these candidates? They don't exist. These magical unicorns who, you know, are diverse. But they're, they're very much trying to get through the front door. Um, and something that I say a lot to companies is a lot of times the application process, especially for junior engineers like myself when I was entering the workforce, um, 
are kind of a barrier to entry for people with diverse backgrounds because oftentimes a recruiter will be given you know a list of things like okay they need to know python they need to know javascript i personally can check off those two things but i don't have a computer science degree um and i think that if you make certain limitations on the the credentials that you want for someone coming in you're really limiting the amount of diversity you can you can bring in so i'm a huge advocate for um because you talk to a lot of developers and they they're self-taught or you know they they don't come from that traditional uh, Stanford background. So um, I'm a huge advocate for, for non-traditional education, non-traditional backgrounds, getting more cool, exciting products out there because the more people like myself, I mean, I know personally, I really want to make a lot of technological advances in the theater industry since everything's on paper. <laughs> so, and also getting that artistic eye just in in the technical world, I think can be valuable. You can be, and you don't have to code. You can be a designer. You can, there's so many different, you know, stage managers are basically product managers. So there's a lot of really cool avenues for from the arts specifically that you can go, but I think this applies to all backgrounds. Yeah, I so agree with that. I mean, we tend to segment also our life, right? Uh, with like hobbies and then like uh, uh, engineering or work. And sometimes like we can find like actually ways to merge that all and to make it more interesting for, uh, yeah. I'll say that as an actor performing on stage, I never got to come to Napa. <laughs> but now I get to perform on stage and come to Napa. So I kind of get to put the two things that I love together. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you.